What is D12? Le Leonardo's monorail. You finally reach the top of this the top floor of this building, a garden with a slanted glass ceiling. Looks like there are no more stars to be had. Oh, I guess, we, yeah, we were climbing a building. But we're only on day 12. Easter Bunny HQ. I don't know why there's a Tiger Lilies link. Okay. According to these documents, Easter Bunny HQ isn't just this building. It's a collection of buildings in the nearby area. They're all connected by a local monorail, and there's another building not far from here. Unfortunately, being night, the monorail is currently not operating. You remotely connect to the monorail control systems and discover the boot sequence expects a password. Um, password checking logic is easy to extract, but the code it uses is strange. It's a SEM bunny code. Designed for the new computer you just assembled. Oh, okay, good. We're going to write a little VM. All right. Um, so we have just one, two, three, four instructions. Okay. This sounds like fun. Uh, I'm going to push these up and then do this. Oh, no, not this. Um, we're going to edit the mod, right? And then come up with day 12 here. All right, and that should give us this. And we go there, we say AOC, boom, uh, 2016, day 12. And we try to do that, and we hit run. And we get unsolved, good. Okay, so we're ready to go. Now we have instructions. So the way we normally do a VM is we create an instruction enum. And then we create a machine which executes the instructions and has memory and registers and things like that. So we have four registers, start at zero. It can hold any integer. However, it seems to make use of only a few instructions. Okay, so copy, copies X, either an integer or value of a register into register Y. Inc increases the value of registers. So those are always registers. And then J and Z, X, Y jumps to an instruction Y away. Positive means forward, negative means backward, but only if X is not zero. And I'm guessing X could be a register or a value. J and Z instructions moves relative to itself. An offset of negative one would continue with the previous instruction, while an offset of two would skip over the next instruction. So J and Z A2 would skip to the end. I'm assuming that once we hit, once we fall off the end of the instructions, yeah, when you move past the last instruction, the program halts. Okay. After executing the assembly code in your puzzle input, what value is left in register A? Okay. So we do want to set up instructions. So we can say um, new inst. And we're going to want uh, to be able to print these out because we're going to do some debugging here. Derive debug. So int is going to get, let's just use the same names they have here. Uh, it's either an integer or the value of a register. So should we just make something called source, which could I, which could either be a value or a register? and then it stores it in register Y. So this is always a register. Let's do that. And an ink takes a register, dec takes a register, and J and Z takes a register, and can this be a value or a... Let's put I32 there and then we'll take a look at the input. Oh, that's not too bad. So J and Z2, J and Z5, negative 2, negative 2, negative 6, negative 2, negative 5. So it's always just a number. All right. Cat greater than input 2016, 12. Um, all right. So 
git add input git status git commit dash m 2016 day 12 input good oops commit with two m's it's probably the better way to do it okay we have to figure out how to deal with source and register a source can be let's talk about sources can either be a register or a value and i'm just going to use i32s for everything uh, until we we're proven things are proven otherwise and then registers should just be um just a b and d a b c and d right and so just those four a b c and d yeah okay I started zero okay so and then the machine will just initialize all these to zero and that'll be that um okay so we do have this as test input Um, and then for the actual thing here, do we want to just store the program? Which is just going to be a vector of instruction. Just like that. And then as we parse, we'll just grab the input and we could just say let lines is equal to this and just put backslash n on each one of these guys here except for that one we'll suck these up like this and then just say split and that way they're separate um, and then map this Roger Twee how are you Roger asks, did we, in 2016, did we even have computers then? I, I think I had like a little handheld something or other. Yeah, 2016. It seems, it seems like to somebody as old as me, 2016 is last year, right? But 2016 was six years ago now, so, which is crazy to think about. Um, I'm doing this business here um, because this is the way our code The code that I wrote to read the lines in uh, AOC lib read lines input 2016 12 and this way I could just swap back and forth between lines and underscore lines and that um, get test data versus non test data um, so each one of these is just a vec of string so there we go uh, for L in lines what are we gonna do we're going to look at, oh, you know what we can do is we can just write a parsing thing there. We can just say self.prog.push uh, inst parse l. l is a string, right? Yeah. So we can do that. And that way we, we encapsulate the um, parsing into the instruction code. Inst. And this would just be fn parse. Um, S is a string, and it returns a self. All right, so let's talk equals s dot split um, and collect into a vec of O. Uh, does that just return stir split char? Uh, return splits. Can I say collect into vec of string or do I have to say vec of stir? I forget what. Didn't complain. Didn't say unknown. Okay, and then we'll just say match talk of zero because that's going to be the first argument here. Copy ink deck or JNC. So if it's, let's do the easy ones first. <laughs> ink is just going to be inst ink, and then we just give it a register. Which oh, let's add let's add code to parse registers. 
um, register parse talk one. Right, and then deck does the same thing. Oops, it should be a lowercase. Um, so then for register, hmm, I'm surprised this didn't. Oh, there we go. Okay, uh, impl register fn parse as stir. I think this, those are stirs, right? And then it returns self. Um, oh, what should we do if we don't get it? Match S. If it's A, return self A, and so on. B, C, D, and empty. I guess we can just panic. The, the inputs on advent of code are always well formed. Corrupted input file. Uh, what does it like here? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Um, and we can just do that. Same thing here. Panic. Corrupted input file. So, Roger, if you're if you're still hanging around here, I'm curious if uh, do you plan on streaming again? You used to stream uh, video games, and that was a, a fun thing to watch. Okay, yeah, so we don't have copy or JNC. So let's add those. Um, which one would be the simpler one? I guess they're both complex. Um, let's do JNC first. That might be slightly easier. So we're going to create an inst JNZ, and we're going to do a register. Or let's just double check here. JNZC, JNZD, JNZD. Yeah. So there's one place where we, it's a value. That was the thing I needed to check. So this, this is actually a source. Um, which means let's, let's do that. Ample source, because we can parse a source, just like we can parse a, uh, file system, uh, uh, parse s stir self. So this is either going to be a register if it starts with a through, oh, you know what we can do? Let's be even cleverer. Um, parsing a register, we can say result self or blank and then just say okay on all of these guys and then just just returns an error doesn't matter what the error is uh, it does mean we do need to unwrap these things that's fine uh, but then what we can do here is we can tr try to parse out it oops this line we can say if let okay reg equals uh, register parse yes then source reg oh reg reg right because we have reg here otherwise it's a value source val s dot parse Right? Unwrap. And that's all that is. And then we could say JNZ source parse talk one. And then it's always a number, right? So we can say talk two dot parse unwrap. It should be able to figure out the type based on the fact that we're generating a JNZ. Let's find out. Of course not. I messed something up with braces.
Oh, I did. Right there. Okay, so that compiles. That's good. So now we have to worry about the copy instruction. Uh, copy. Uh, and the copy can take a source and then a destination register, right? Yeah. So this is inst copy. And we're going to say source parse talk one, comma, register parse talk two. All right, that wasn't, wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. That does not build. Oh, unwrap. Good, 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 good. Oh, we do. We are getting corrupted input file here. Why? On line nineteen. Uh, repassing in. Uh, can I put this here? Talk. Can I, will it do that? Oh, I have a. I have a. A space here. Okay, let's fix that. It was corrupted. How about that? Here we go. Okay, now we have unsolved, unsolved. Okay, so now all we need to do, now that we've got everything parsing, we should just be able to execute the, the, the program as a machine. Um, and I'm going to guess that we're going to need to use it for both part one and part two. So I should make it a separate thing, right? Struct machine and it's going to contain the registers. Um, there's four of them that are I-32s. Um, it's yeah, I'm just trying to think because we uh, we also need the instruction pointer, right? And then we need a, um, the program, which is going to be the VEC of instructions. So uh, the reason I was pausing there for a minute was that I'm thinking maybe we don't, we don't sort the program in here, but we store it in the machine and we put the machine inside our um, thing here. Let's call it the, the VM. And then we just say VM. Derive default. Let me just say machine default. Uh, semicolon. And prog, self prog doesn't exist, right? And now, because it's self machine prog. Um, why isn't this complaining here? Uh oh, are we back in that state where we have problems? Okay. Self. Machine prog. Oh, VM. There. Okay. So now we're good. And we do start all the registers off at zero because of the default. We start the IP at zero because of the default. And now we just need to write an executor. And an executor? A thing that executes the machine. Impl machine. And just call it run. And call it exec. I guess it doesn't matter. Um, we're going to modify. We're going to. We need it mutable because we're going to be changing the registers as we execute instructions, and we're going to be changing the IP as we walk our way through the instructions. Um, and does it need to return anything? I don't think it needs to return anything. I'm going to call run. Let's go with run. Um, and then we just say, uh, we can start, we can s start off by setting IP self IP equals zero because we, we might want to run it for part one and part two is, is my guess. And so I can just call run and have it start at the beginning of the thing. And then we can say while self. Um, 
we want to execute an instruction. So we say match self prog self IP. Oh, this is probably borrowing. Mm. This is going to bug me now, right? Because this we're going to be borrowing this data and we're going to be modifying the registers. How do we do that? How do we do that? Um, one thing we could do is cheat and just put the registers here and then copy them back. Because we're going to, I think the answer was what's in A? Yeah, what's in A? Maybe that's what we return. Let's just return what's in A. We don't have to put the registers here at all. Um, that way we're not. And we don't even need the um, the IP in it, right? We could just say let mod IP is zero, and just all we do is store the the program. All right, so we're simplifying things a bit. Uh, I thirty two four equals zero 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 zero, and now all we need to say is do is mat, um, we just read the instruction. So if it's let's do the easy ones first ink r so we get a register um because okay so here's here's a little clever trick in rust because these don't have any fields on them any variants or whatever we can just convert them directly to a number by saying as u size i can say reg r as u size plus equals one. And then deck R is U size minus equals one and then everything else is to do. Everything else being two things. Uh, self prog len. And self IP. Okay. Sure. And cast through a raw pointer first. Oh, it, this is a reference to a register. Okay, so we can do that. Oh, my mistake. Why can't we do that? Yeah, it's a reference to a register. And this register here, I don't want to I guess what we can just do is add copy. I mean, it's just a number. Yeah. Okay. Oh, the other thing we need to do is... If we haven't ink deck or copy because the J and Z might be doing a jump. Oh, I, I know what we can do. We can just say if do ink. Um, oh, okay. Uh, if we make this a separate, a separate thing, maybe we'll call it step and it'll Oh, yeah, but then, mm, okay. Let old IP is equal to IP, IP plus equals one. There. And then old IP, and then we can just set it uh, for the for the jump instruction. Okay. That's a, that's a reasonable compromise, I think. So we have copy, we have a source and a dest on copy. Um, why don't we do it this way? Source reg r dest. And then I can also create a source val v dest. Right? Then each one of those can have its own subtype. And then we can have, say inst um, j and z. 
Uh, here I don't I don't want to split it out because I want to calculate the non-zeroness of it once. So I'll just say source and dest. Okay. So now to implement this guy here, we have a register, and all we need to do is say self reg self reg reg dot uh, of star r as u size is equal to self is reg r uh, dest no dest as u size right is r as u size and I bet you that can fit there. Let's find out. Yeah, I took it. Okay. And that's all that needs to do. And then val is even easier. We can say reg dest as u size is equal to v. Unreachable pattern. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now it's unreachable. Okay, good. Okay, so now here we're going to say let val is equal to match source, and it's either going to be a register r, so then it's reg r as u size, and if it's source value v, then it's just v. Right, and the value is a i32 that we read either way, and then if val is not equal to zero, we're going to do the jump. Um, oh, but val is an i32 and ip is a u size. So we have to say if val is less than zero. Oh no, dest. Dest is an i32, yeah. We say if where we're jumping to is less than zero, then ip minus equals minus, oh, we have to put a star in there. I guess it doesn't matter, right? I could say this dest as u size, else ip plus equals dest as u size. And that's that. I think that's the whole machine. And now we've incremented ip and then reset ip if we're jumping. Otherwise, we just keep going, and then eventually we fall off the, the, the end of the program. And then we're going to return we're going to return reg of zero, because that's the a value that we care about. And we have a problem here. Variant is never constructed deck. How does it know? How does it know if it's never constructed? Did I did I fail to parse this correctly here? Oh, I did. Look at that. Thank you, Rust. That would have been a tough thing to debug. Now, run is never used. Okay, so let's use it. So all we have to do is say self vm run. And this should be the um, example output. It says 42. Um, leaving register a is 42. Okay, so now all we need to do is flip this to the real input. And apparently the real input takes a while to run or I've got a bug in my code. So I'm going to go over to this other window here. Um, PS-FU Gus, grep, target, kill this guy. Okay, it stopped. It stopped running. Okay. Um, glitch but small says if matches after the match maybe. Um, which match? Which match? You have to let me know. I, I don't have line numbers here, so it's hard for, for you to tell me which match it is, but maybe you can tell me which, which function you're talking about. I'm not sure what I would need to check. Um, 
for matches because I'm, I'm never just checking to see is it this or is it that i'm just i'm actually executing some code or at least trying to but apparently failing um in a big way here um i mean everything seems do i have this backwards no the sources are and the dust is this Okay. I mean, this all looks looks the same. Maybe I've just been programming or streaming too long, and I just I don't see what the bug is. Um, we can try printing out the state of things as we as we run, but that's going to generate a lot of output. So let's go over here. Uh, Printlin executing. Uh, actually, what we can do is we just print out the value of the registers, and then print out. The line we're about to execute uh, and then say what line we're on ip colon four it's not that long right uh, oh two and then the instruction so this would be red oh reg is already there ip is already there so we just need uh self prog old ip and we can watch what it's doing. Cargo run less. Okay, and then we can also pull it up here. Input 2016 11, uh, 12. Copy one to A. So now A, one, A is in, one is in A. Copy one to B. Okay, one is in B. Copy 26 to D. Okay, that worked. J if jump if C is not zero to two. It doesn't do the jump because C is zero. Did I get that wrong? No. That's right. That's correct. Okay. J and Z one to five. So now we jump to five. We jump five forward, right? One, two, three, four, five. Should be copy A to C. Oh, it isn't. Oh, minus dest is u size. Or old IP plus dest is u size. Okay, let's try running that without all these prints. All right, that was that seemed like a, a simple. Let's do it this way here in case I do have another failure. All right, it came up with an answer very very fast. Um, boom. Ooh, answer is too low. I didn't guess this value. I was told to use that value. Okay, so what else could be going wrong here? Um, oops. Okay, so the failure here was this. So we jumped forward. Oh, that's what the bug is. Glitch but small says I wrote plus equals IP. There we go. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. So. Oh, I forgot to take out the print. All right. So now I'm going to quote unquote guess another number. Is it too soon? Why is this blurry? That's weird. Okay, so that's the right answer. All right, very good. Thank you, Glitch. Finding that bug. Um, this is kind of a little awkward, but whatever. This works. Um, is there any cleanup we can do here? 
let's run ba uh, bacon. Uh, hit Clippy. Clippy says I don't need this to be a string. I could just be a stir. And then if we run it, it still gives us the same answer. Good. Okay. Git status. Git add source. Git commit dash m twenty sixteen day twelve part one. Very good. Now what's part two? Part two is, as you head down the fire escape to the monorail, you notice it didn't start. Register C needs to be initialized to the position of the ignition key. If you instead initialize register C to be one, what value is now left in register A? Okay. So let's do this. Let's have run take an argument and saying what the first value of C should be. First C. 32. We can just put that here. And then here, when we try to run it, we give it a zero. And here, we give it a one. Super easy. And now we have another answer. It took 1.6 seconds. Wow. And that's the other right answer. Yeah, why is this blurry? If I hover over it, it looks okay. I don't know, maybe I need to refresh my CSS or something. Okay. Um, but that's it. That's all we did for part two. Okay, so part two was, was pretty straightforward. I wonder what, what, hmm. Uh, I don't know. I wonder what the intent was there. A, git commit dash am 2016 day 12 part two all right and i'm going to call it there because my voice is starting to go i usually can only stream for about two hours so this is two hours um and then in the next stream hopefully we can uh, uh we can continue with advent of code because this is a good warm-up for uh 2022